Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, and I'm also with Carleton University, the Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. In this video, I'm going to talk about planetary, <coughs> planetary wave resonances. I'm going to relate the jet stream behavior um, that we're seeing on the Earth with resonance frequencies and uh, vibration frequencies, for example, in violin strings, in optical waveguides, in radio frequency waveguides, things like that. I'm going to talk about frequencies and wavelengths and what's happening on the planet. So this um, diagram is from a recent paper. Um, I'll just bring it up here. It's the influence of anthropogenic climate change on planetary wave resonance and extreme weather events. So it's Michael Mann at Al, and I'll talk about this paper in great detail, but I'm just going to talk about the highlights first. So this is the wind speed. The colors represent the wind speed along the lines of longitude in meters per second. So we got up to here, 20 meters per second. The red is in the southward direction. This is at the surface um, of the Earth. So the red is in the south direction, and the blues and purples, etc., are in the north, um, northward direction. The uh, scale here, 20 meters a second minus 26 meters a second. A meter per second is about, well, it's precisely 2.237 miles per hour or 3.6 kilometers an hour. So 20 would be about, it would be about 44 miles an hour, the 20 and my, so that would be going southwards and the minus 20 would be going northward at that speed. Those are speeds on the surface. Um, this is um, averages over July, 1980. And you can see there's very, most of it is in this sort of range here and there's some red areas going south, but there's not many features here. This is a normal situation before we um, have all this Arctic warming and Arctic temperature amplification, decreasing the temperature gradient to the equator, disrupting the jet streams. This is an extreme condition from May 2013. So what you can see is you can see all of the different features here at the surface and let's just count them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll call that n. Okay, n is an integer. We'll call it, so n is eight. n is eight in this particular uh, situation. n can be, I'll tell you ahead of time, n can be six, seven, or eight on the Earth, um, and when we have that condition met, we get these resonance, resonance, uh, resonances with the Earth, if you like. We get stuck weather conditions, stuck patterns, and that leads to extreme heat events that last a long time, or torrential rain events, um, some, or some which lead to flooding. So those are some of the extreme events that we're seeing. So let me... Um, and let's call this distance around the Earth L. So L will vary with latitude, of course. At the equator, it's maximum. At the North Pole, L will go to zero. That's the length around. So even in this region, we can talk about the average L in this band. You know, of course, L will be shorter the higher you go up north or south, you know, towards the pole, then L reduces. Okay, so that's one difference with the Earth. Now, so here's the planet here. Here's the Earth here. And I'm taking a rubber band here. Let's, so this, we're looking at the North Pole here. And I'm putting this uh, rubber band over the North Pole to represent the jet stream. And then I will tilt it up here. So the length of this rubber band all the way around is L. And we can also talk about the length of a guitar string or a violin string as being L, or the length of a bridge between two fixed points as being L, 
or we can also make an analogy to electronic circuits. But uh, let's move on. Okay, so just remember those sort of things so far. So that was, I was showing you images from the Earth's surface. If we go up into the um, top of the troposphere, called near the trop you know, the tropopause, it's the division between the troposphere, the lower atmosphere to the upper atmosphere, varies between 17 kilometers high at the equator to about seven kilometers high at the uh, poles. Okay, because the air gets colder at the poles, the atmosphere is compressed. So these are, you're, you may be familiar with these sort of things. These are the Rosby waves, the high altitude jet streams that circumvent uh, the earth. So I'm showing a completely zonal flow here. The, the elastic band is not oscillating like this. Okay, so this is the zonal direction. The up and down north-south direction is the meridional direction, and we get the waves there, these Rosby waves. And because the Arctic is warming so much, the temperature difference to the equator is reducing. Therefore, the jet streams are slowing down in the west to east, or the U-axis direction, and thus becoming wavier in the Y-axis direction. Okay, so we're getting this type of very convoluted behavior here. Now remember the jet streams separate cold, dry air from the northern regions, from warm, humid air from the more southerly regions. It acts like almost like a wall between that. So if you're right here, it's very cold. If you're right here, it's very warm. So as these waves move ar around the planet, as they, as they move, as they shift, you can go from very, very hot conditions to very cold conditions and then back to very hot conditions over a matter of days. So let's go back to, let's remember, so the L is the length of the rubber band. Okay, now let's go to the violin here. Okay, so you've got these different strings. They're all attached at a point here, but they all end at a different point here. So. They go to these uh, pegs here. Okay, so this peg will connect to the shortest string, and then the next longest string, the next longest string, the very longest string. Okay, so you've got these different pegs. So the length L of the violin string is changing. Okay, so this would be comparable to changing latitude on the Earth. Also, the other factor is that the mass of the strings or the strength of the strings can vary, the mass can vary, and that will also affect the, um, the vibration frequencies. Okay, so keep that in mind. So let's have a look at the actual string here. So this is a fixed point here, this is a fixed point here. This is for a violin. For the earth, you know, you would wrap these two fixed points right around the earth, and it would, you could, if these points were coinciding, you know, then that's the situation analogous on the earth. So you can pluck the string and you get a vibration. This is a vibration, this is a fundamental frequency vibration, the fundamental um, condition. Okay, so we can go over here. Now let's, so we're fixed here and fixed here. We can also get an entire wave in here. This is how, the wavelength of this particular curve here is going to be, well, in a wave we go up and we go down, and that's one wavelength. So this is half a wavelength here. So the full wavelength would be 2L, if L is the distance between here, and, that, and then the next frequency would be we get a crest and we get a trough in here. So that N I was talking about being 6, 7, or 8 for the Earth, N is 1 in this case. Okay, let's have a look over here. By the way, to get to this uh, image here, just do a Google uh, Images, go Google Google Images, go to that site, and then string resonance, and you see exactly what you're looking at here to look at it yourself. You know, if I'm losing you a bit here. Okay, so let's look here. So now if you double the fundamental frequency, then this is the next mode of vibration of the string. So you've got a crest here and a trough here, 
and that one wavelength fits into the length L of the string. Now we'll add another, so we've got a crest, a trough, and then we put another crest in, and this is one and a half wavelengths. This is one wavelength, add another half, so one and a half wavelengths fits in. So let's have a look at the simple math, which then determines uh, what's happening here. So if n equals 1, then the wavelength is twice the distance, 2L, and you can get the frequency. As you go up in number, then this is what we have. So n equals 2, you've got that full wavelength equal to L, and 3, and so on. So the equation is n times lambda, which is a wavelength, is equal to 2 times L. Bring the n across, lambda the nth node is equal to 2 over n times L. Okay, now I told you that we get this planetary resonance when n equals 6, 7, or 8. And I'll get into the details of that when I discuss the details of the paper. But when we have n equals 6, then the wavelength will be one-third L. Okay, so we'll get three wavelengths around the Earth when n equals 7, then it's 2 7 L, and when n equals 8, it's 2 8 or 1 quarter L. So we get three wavelengths around the Earth, or four wavelengths, or three and a half wavelengths. And when we get those frequencies, or those wavelengths, then we have a planetary resonance situation, and we get stuck weather patterns. This happened in 2010, and basically Pakistan was in the trough and was flooded out over an entire month of almost continuous rain. Three quarters of the country was flooded out and Russia was in the crest or um, the, the ridge of the wave and had record heat waves and we lost uh, a third or 40 percent of the wheat crop and that's that caused the you know precipitated food prices spiking and the Arab Spring and all the rest of that. 20 in, in uh, 2003, we had the massive heat waves in Europe, which killed 70,000 people. Uh, we, had the, we had the massive droughts in Texas in 2011, and we've had the droughts in California that were ongoing until recently with the atmospheric um, rivers. Okay, so, so these um, resonances are, are very interesting. Now, remember what I said, that L is shifting as a function of latitude. Um, we can make the analogy, analogous to, analogy to, elect, to waveguides, optical waveguides. This is my old specialty, um, optics, laser physics. So here we have, these are the transverse electric modes. So for the second number is in the depth direction. We're only talking about a plane here. This is a waveguide. The electric field is confined between these. This is how a laser resonator works, for example. If we have light bouncing back and forth. So this is the fundamental mode. This is the second n equals 2 mode, n equals 3 mode. Okay, so when we talk about jet streams being three-dimensional, we could make a, we, we could go on and use this type of analogy to describe them. Now, let me talk a bit about resonance, okay? Every, every um, object um, has a different resonance frequency. And if you reach the resonance frequency, then you then a lot of energy is is uh, energy can be amplified in the, for example the motion of a bridge. Um, the reason why greenhouse gases absorb um, short wave absorb long wave uh, radiation heat from the surface is because the resonance frequency of them is reached. It excites the molecule. The energy is captured into the motion of the molecule. So here is an amplification where the wave, instead of just staying at the same amplitude, it, the amplitude is increasing and you reach a, the situation can blow up. So the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington State in 1940, there was a light breeze and it started the oscillations of the bridge and the vibrations of the bridge and the bridge just came down. And the breeze was, I don't know, 20 miles an hour or 20 kilometers an hour. It was a very, very small breeze and it just set up these oscillations in the bridge. This is 35 vibrations per minute, 14, and the bridge just collapsed. Thank you.